Back in 2013, Mark Cuban from the show Shark Tank invested in a company that sold bars made with cricket protein powder or flour. What Mark was interested in wasn't in selling the bars as much as supplying cricket flour. This can be used like regular protein powder in recipes, replacing a portion of the flour to increase the amount of protein in whatever you're baking. We already have protein powder. Why bring in a new source? And is it a high quality bioavailable protein? If it can be shown to help us build muscle, better than a whey protein isolate, then I can guarantee guys who lift aren't going to care if it came from insects. In January, the World Economic Forum met in Switzerland, and one of the items on their agenda was on how eating insects could reduce climate change. I'm not going to go into everything. Still, they brought up an interesting projection, stating by 2050, the Earth will have nearly 10 billion people on it, and the demand for protein will exceed our ability to acquire it. Not enough protein to support our gains? Now that's a problem. I'll be 85 in 2050, but I'm still going to be lifting. Whoopa! Whoopa? Whoopa! <laughs> okay, this is where insects come in. They can be farmed using fewer resources than traditional meat sources. With their short life cycle and high reproductive rate, a female cricket lays close to 3,000 eggs in her lifetime, making it a very sustainable food source. But back to my 85-year-old gains. Will insects be as effective in helping me build muscle as current protein sources? At this time, cricket powder seems to be the most marketable product. I looked for a cricket protein isolate so I could compare it to a whey isolate, and as far as I can see, they currently don't sell this product or it's not readily available. I did find a study that compared the bioavailability of amino acids between whey, soy, and lesser mealworm protein isolate. They had the same six men on six different days receive one of the three proteins and took blood samples, one before ingesting, then right after and again at the 20, 40, 60, 90, and 120 minute mark. They looked at the essential amino acids, branched chain amino acids, and leucine. Whey protein had the greatest concentration of amino acids and at the 60 minute mark, both whey and soy protein ingestion peaked. With insect protein not peaking until 120 minutes, making it a slow releasing protein, its concentration of amino acids was comparable to soy isolate. This isn't bad when you look at where soy is on the protein quality score. It's not that much lower than whey. If you are taking protein through the day, the fact that it's slow digesting shouldn't matter. But if you're training fasted and looking for a quick protein source after your workout, mealworm isolate wouldn't be it. All of this is based on one study with six participants, so much more research must be done before this becomes a mainstream product. The researchers had thought insect protein should have rated higher and hypothesized is because of the chitin, which is found mainly in the insect's exoskeleton and negatively affects the absorbability of protein. There shouldn't be much chitin in an isolate, but in a cricket flour or powder, there will be guaranteed. Keep this in mind as we move into the next portion of our discussion, where we compare insects to beef, chicken, and pork. For many of us workout guys, chicken and beef is the foundation of our protein intake. To be fair, we're not going to sit down to a plate of insects like we would a nice juicy steak. I could maybe see adding them to a salad for extra flavor. I've read they have a nutty taste, but I've never eaten any. I've searched to see what type of large insects could be served and found scorpions, which made me think a lobster but I have no idea if you could peel open the exoskeleton and eat the inside like you would a lobster. An interesting side note is if you're allergic to crustaceans, you're probably allergic to insects. They compared the nutritional value of six different insects, including crickets and mealworms, to beef, pork, and chicken. They used two different nutrient profiling tools. I'll show the Ofcom model on the screen. Notice the variety of nutritional value between the different bugs. And while this shows us the nutrition score of the food, it doesn't address absorbability. Let me know in the comments, yay or nay to insect protein. Would you eat bugs to get your protein? Then watch this video next to find out if a high protein diet is dangerous and keep working out while having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you again in the next one. Whoopah!